Phil Kurtz. I'm a professional watercolor painter and storyboard artist. Good evening, Ben. Good evening, James. Good evening, John. You beat all the ladies. <laughs> Good on you guys. Nice to see you all. Well, not quite see you, but you know what I mean. Wendy, good evening. The guys beat you tonight. So, Koi Carp tonight. I felt that that would be nice and something a little different. It's all about the water isn't it really one way and another so I hope everybody has had a good weekend I have had a great couple of days I have um, thrown myself back into my layout and uh, been doing uh, the first of building some scenery and uh, filming that for this week's video on Sanding Junction and I've uh, been laying the start of the um, track going through Sandlin Junction itself. Um, so all good stuff. All, all good. Uh, Luke, good evening to you. Derek, good evening to you, sir. Enjoyed your little video, Luke. That was nice. Little end to ends looking good. Jim, good evening to you. Missed you for the last couple of sessions. Hope you're well. Hope everything's going well over there. We are starting to build a little audience, which is good. All right. Well, we'll give it a few more minutes anyway. It's not quite seven o'clock to be sure. Uh, Koi car. Got a pond, two ponds full of these. Love them. Had them for many, many years. These are two of my fish from years ago. Unfortunately, no longer with us. But... Uh, the bottom one is called a Garomo, whilst the top one is a Sankey, although it's got a few pectoral dark marks, which tends to suggest it's a shower. Uh, hi, Ken. Thank you very much. All the way from Melbourne. What the heck time is it out there right now? Michael, good evening to you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, I haven't finished the platforms yet, John. I've sort of um, I've got that bit to do. Uh, I've been running everything through just to make sure I's and T's that it's all sorted uh, before I carry on and uh, finish those platforms off. Well, not finish them off, but do the top section anyway. But I will get back to that soon. Um, I've sort of been jumping all over the place. Um... <laughs> Jim. Well, we're all doing things like that, but uh, hope they're all all the guys are well. Um, that's cool. Bramley, good evening to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, that's great. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Uh, 4 a.m. in the morning and cold. Good Lord. But thank you very much, uh, Ken, for putting in the effort to get up. And uh, I hope you've got a big mug of coffee going on in front of you to get you through this um and i thank you very very much for joining us from melbourne um right okay well i better get started and i <laughs> i could start talking otherwise right i've got a simple board 2.4 millimeter mdf board three coats of gesso on that has been randomly put on with a wide brush and the top coat is just a color in this case it's just a, a cool pinky color um it really doesn't matter. It's got a very light sand over the top. Judy, good evening to you. Um, okay, I'm going to start the drawing process. And I'm going to draw this in my standard umber. Um, and I'm going to do it. It's going to move. It's, it's going to be... The, the, the drawing, in a way, is quite an organic drawing. Um, because I don't mean that sort of because of the fish. But... Um, it's just that I will look at it, I will draw it, and I might alter that. So I'm just going to play around with a few shapes, just to start with, to try and get a feel for these uh, things. 
Now over the years I've painted many many of these fish. I love them. They are so nice to do and of course it's just instant colour in your painting. So I'm going to come down with a with a size of brush just for a short while just while I sketch this out. He says looking for one or well, one that looks half decent. That's the thing. Actually that'll do. Brand new one. Can't get much better than that. It's a small round brush, but it will do its job. Now then, uh, hi Teresa, good evening to you. Um, how did my, oh, I'm sorry about that. I hope you're feeling better today. Sue, good evening to you, nearly missed you. Um, okay, um, now Sue, I don't know if you were party to conversations relating to classes and for any other students there, but uh, because of the government lockdown isn't, happening until the 4th of July um, you know it isn't lifting to the one meter level uh, then um, we will not be holding class until the 8th of that's the 8th of July that's the first Wednesday after the 4th that we can do it um, so bear that in mind and I look forward to seeing you then and uh, yeah it'd be great James good evening from Spain lovely Thanks for joining us. Missed you in the last couple, but uh, glad you're with us tonight. Um, right, better get back to what I'm meant to be doing. Drawing fish. Um, I've said, I've got a pond full of these, and it it's they're so good. They're so nice. Now, I, I wanted to put it a little bit of room in front, maybe a bit smaller here. I wanted just to bring these a little closer, these little reeds. And they these reeds are... Interesting because they actually rise and sink. I think if I remember these this is my old pond. This is one of my old ponds um, In my former house and and these fish I had way back and um, as I say sadly uh, Through one reason and another I haven't got them. We had um, an awful winter the year that we brought them here and um, we made so much effort, in fact, I negotiated with the owners of the house uh, well ahead of time. I bought artificial ponds, you know, put up ponds, and we had all massive filtration on them. And we brought all the fish over. We didn't do anything wrong. Um, and um, they stayed in that pond for a whole year, believe it or not, poor things. But they, they, were, they were doing well, and they loved it. Well... I say they loved it but they seemed to be enjoying themselves they didn't have any problems and then we built the new pond and it's always the case new pond syndrome and um yeah and then our problems started and we lost several very sadly some of our very special fish um a few fish that weren't as um all, all fish are special i didn't want to sort of make that sound bad but you know what I mean some have even more um, things with them than others now I think that um, part of me wants to bring this over a bit more but you know I'm going to stick with it I'm just going to maybe give him a little bit more here and make him a little longer there into the head something like that just give me a little bit more this way and we're going to put the eye in the eye is black and blue, believe it or not. Always got this lovely blue light across the bone of the head. And a great way to try and uh, draw the head especially uh, is to uh, draw the pattern in if you can. And that is a great guide. So this is going to be really red. And that will go up through the back of the fish like so. Okay, and then these, you can't see them on this one. This one almost blown bubbles. They're just feeding off the top. You can see that uh, there are a number of little pellets floating around on the water top, and that's what they're up feeding on. Um, basically, a koi has these two barbels each side of its mouth in each corner, and they are sensory, and they feed, and, and essentially a koi is a bottom feeder. It's only man that has created the situation where they become top feeders because obviously we like to see these fish 
and it's no good if they're swimming on the bottom of the pond all the time. So over the years they have manifest to become um, a surface feeders because we give them floating pellet uh, to enhance that uh, situation. Now they're big deep fish what you see when you see the top of a koi and that's the exciting part is the top pattern but the pattern invariably stops halfway down the flanks um, on most of them not all of them but most of them and um, you you sort of you change the visuals uh, when you see a koi in that fashion and this is getting deeper as it goes under the water I'm going to suggest in a moment just some of these sort of watermarks that are running through the pair of them and I thought it would be nice to do this purely and simply because we've got all the um, um, sort of movement with the water I'm just coming across to check on the well, I'm following the thing yep uh, da, da, da. have I missed anybody yes hopefully see you on the 8th so that'll be fantastic and uh, yeah okay that's cool um, right now I'm going to come down to this fish here and there's a slight angle change between this one and the other one so I'm just going to sort of put this mark in here and it's almost centering around this little shape here this water so let's try and put our other fish in a little closer to this one there maybe not there a little humpy on the back and comes across to the head and nice mouth wide and here you can see both barbills uh, that are and you can see quite a bit underneath him as well and his gills gill plates and you don't see too much of his back it's almost like it's shrunk I remember I used to do a lot of fishing as a child with my father and as a young adult and I remember fishing off of and where was I, I think I was fishing at Deal and um, I caught a codling and it had the head of a codling that should have weighed around about 10-11 pounds, not huge but nice size, certainly off shore nice size and um, the body was about I don't know four inches and then a big tail it it was I don't know big head little body big tail never I never seen one before or all since um, I don't know what caused the growth malfunction whether it was chemicals in the water something else I'm not too sure um, but it was um, weird and consequently um, as as a dinner it never happened never ate it um, got a little bit tweaky for that throw it back um, but there you go. Now I'm being very, very loose uh, about this drawing and just simply putting stuff in and seeing if it works, if it feels right. Um, and we're trying to create the movement with these koi and nothing more. Um, we're going to put the eye in on this one now. So this is this one is called a gromo. And a gromo is um, tantamount to meaning lotus blossom. And it's the beautiful edge shape of this red, which is not the same type of red uh, as the Showa or the uh, Sankey fish is. But it is nonetheless a beautiful red. Now around the head here, the red is extremely similar to other fish. Got to be said. Uh, I'd be lying if I didn't. But the other red on the back of the head on the back of the body here as it goes up over to the top down across here and don't forget what I will say before I go into any further is that the fish are going to be distorted in look this is no way this fish looks like this in reality but the water movement all over this fish is distorting the look and that's why we get in these weird odd little shapes a little bit of bony area here for the dorsal fin and that goes around and disappears and the fish looks really quite strange but not to worry that's the idea uh, is to create this illusion back to the color this red here this red has little bits of what they call uh, red in in Japanese is is he h i 
heath, which is uh, the red colour. And the um, black inner fish is a sumi. And um, the lovely red patterns on these uh, Goromo fish are uh, richer because there's a little bit of blue, grey, black into the colour mix. And that's what makes them interesting. This needs to be a bit longer. I'm going to take a bit of cloth and just rub that back. I think I need to make this fish a little longer. So we'll come back into that. I'm going to bring that to there. Give that a little bit more over the back here. I just wasn't quite getting all the room I needed for the head shape. Take that there. And... Uh, yeah, so where was I? The colours. Uh, the colours each have names. Each colour, each pattern, not just colour, pattern too, has a specific name in the world of Japanese koi. And um, to that extent, uh, it's, it's great to know them and it's great to be able to keep them. I've uh, shown fish. Um, I actually could never afford some of the bigger fish. I mean, when you... When people talk about koi, keeping koi, um, they are or can be an extremely expensive proposition, especially the big showstoppers. Um, I was always fortunate that my painting, <laughs> I used to paint other breeders champions. And so instead of getting payment for them, they used to give me good quality fish that I could ill afford myself to buy so I stocked my ponds of the day back then with great looking fish some were able to be shown uh, as well because of that so yeah that's what all that was about I'm just going to extend the tail before we carry on and start doing some color into this um, just checking no one's commenting we are no okay and this is going to extend the tail out. Now I've got a beautiful tail, nice arc to the tail, nice fan. And then the the sort of cut shape comes down in a big shape like so. And then tucks into the center. And then the smaller one at the bottom. And comes out to a point like so. Something like that. Take that excessive color off that I left there. Don't need that. Let's just look at the gill plate on this one um, to make sure we've got about right on that one. They're quite angular, and you can do them quite angular. And they lip up and they come up into the throat. And what we're seeing here is the mouth shape there and a little bit of the um, barbell and then up into the throat, which is coming out like so. There's the throat of the fish. And then, of course, we've got the other pectoral fin, which is a little bit odd-shaped. This one is probably a little closer, as you'd see it. But it's still being a little bit distorted by the water and the shape of the water. And this is the anal fin. And that's got a nice shape through to there, like so. And the fish is starting to look like the fish. Now, this has got a big, deep girth to it. That needs to come up a little bit more, maybe, where I first had it. I'm going to check these, but that's not too bad. Let's come back to our first fish, and let's just analyse again what we've got here before we start adding colour. Because like all drawing, without good drawing, you do not have a good painting. So I'm just going to come back in, just alter a couple of shapes here, and bring that into there little bit longer into that head and the the fish is actually uh, doesn't have bone as such it has thick cartilage and um, that is very flexible certainly things like uh, this and the um, inside of course and allowing it to turn as it does that's all fin that's the big tail sweep you can't see the second part of this one and that comes into that angle there. And they've got the colour of the back. Now, I could get quite into a discussion on koi. I do love them. As I say, I have 
uh, at home here my probably my fifth or sixth pond I'm not quite sure built um, and we have one uh, which was only a couple of thousand gallons and uh, that sits above ground and then up the road a friend of mine uh, was moving home and asked would I take on his fish and that necessitated building a second pond here which is all above ground not half all above on this one and um, yes yeah, so they are happily housed uh, next to the house in a, what I call a sleeper pond and uh, built with um, modern railway sleepers just take that down there's the other eye and that comes down into the shape of the mouth uh, where are we James could it have been water from power station um, ah well lots of conspiracy the theories on that um, I don't know um, I've never seen the like of it before um, it's really weird to see if we're talking about that cod I caught many years ago really weird uh, here I'm going to just suggest some of this spiky I think we call these soldiers or something I forget they got a name um, but um, they literally they start off underwater and as they mature they come up and I think they can come up and down I'm not 100% sure on my facts now I don't have them in my current ponds um, the koi uh, are habitual destroyers of plant life um, and so most ponds are best kept without greenery unless you can keep it in floating baskets and then it really doesn't last long anyway because what the koi will do is they will nibble at the roots <laughs> in the basket and they will nibble at everything they can and they you know you put uh, a, a big ball lettuce um, into a pond uh, with some koi in and it will last, I don't know, 10 15 minutes tops, it'll be gone. Um, but there you are, right? I'm just going to suggest a couple of the shapes of water. Now, you'll notice that I have really changed the perspective of some of this in relation to the form. Now, I've got a different length picture, uh, board to paint on, and I so I wanted to, um, make this work within that sphere so I'm just looking at some of these shapes here and the water and the elliptics that will be formed by the changes of the water the movement of the water before we get into the painting I'm going to bring some through here like so now this one will be up on my patreon page for anybody patron or not who wishes to use it as are all my stream videos all the um, reference for them is to be found on my patreon channel and as I say providing you're using it to learn from and not any commercial uses then of course you're most welcome to download it and use it to do your own composition and if you feel like sharing that with me later then that's fine you're more than welcome be happy to see it see how you get on Right, so I've really scribbled all over this drawing, but we are now pretty much ready to move on. And uh, just checking anything, and I'm going to have a glug before we get going. Mm. Now, some of you will notice that there are, is a little goldfish in the pond that's just under the weeds. And there is a little um, roach or something, I think. I had a few British species in that pond. And I think that's one, just that little dark shadow underneath some of the, these two main fish. But we are only concentrating on these two. So I'm going to clean this brush out and we're going to crack on. For that, I'm going to use a much larger flat brush. All of my brushes are Rosemary and Company, handmade brushes, and uh, they do a stonking job. These are called Evergreen, and they have a lovely flex to them. I've used all of Rosemary's brushes, <laughs> and she's got a few more. <laughs> but, but this brand, the the uh, the Evergreen, uh, is a more recent brand to uh, have sort of vast 
array of brushes and types and I fell in love with them uh, a couple of years ago and yeah they're just absolutely fantastic okay so let's crack on now you would think that we need it really dark and to a point we do but we're not going to go in with a black we're not going to make it a grunge in that way we're going to come in with a dark we're going to use a lot of umber and we're going to use a lot of um, blue and that does a sense make a dark black and so to that end let's get in there we're going to lighten some places up but let's just get this base color in so that we can start then putting in some lights uh, further in so this part is maybe a little more monotonous I'm going to be leaving some light areas that are suggestive where I definitely know there's a bit of light going on so I'm going to leave that if I it's becomes if it's fairly obvious that that's what's going in there equally I'm going to sort of try and paint negative space between some of these little bits of the weed or the plant that's growing in there take this all the way off and I'm could and I'm going to I'm going to actually add some green some um, lovely uh, cobalt teal into that color just to one side just to take this off to a green over on this side of the canvas and there is that lovely green flush running through the water and I'm going to start that idea off with by adding the green mix to this dark mix already established now it may need more work going on but essentially we have got a blocking in going on um, and that's fine I'm going to come down the side and the head of the koi take that all the way over lovely strong colors and they will punch out those reds and those lights further in like so now I used to I used to I say I used to I still can and that is I used to take a watercolor book and I used to um, do little sketches of these and one great place to go obviously not at the moment because we're in lockdown but um, when we're out of lockdown it's worth taking a sketchbook and a little watercolor set with you and doing little color notes of the fish you soon get the idea of how they work and how they move turn rise go down all these little bits and pieces by doing little sketches and little watercolor drawings um, and that really is a great way of learning how uh, these fish work and then of course you get a great idea as you move forward into their colors and the way the markings are and a great place if you don't know anybody with a good good pond full of nice fish um, is to maybe visit some of these koi centers world of water but generally unfortunately world of water have a lot of their stuff inside so that's not always great because it's nice to have a nice natural light uh, to do these by but things like koi water barn at Chelsfield and one or two other places I'm sure there are about you've only got to look in yellow pages or google it and you'll come up with an address or two I'm sure but it's worth visiting these and, and most people especially if you just say you're there to sketch will they mind of course they won't mind them you're not you know it's not you're not causing them any problems I'm sure I think they to object would be a little bit churlish but if you just explain I'm sure they would love to see you sketching and around the ponds and just studying uh, some of the fish and uh, enjoying yourself but you learn so much from doing that it really is a great idea I used to do it I mentioned one just now which was Koi Water Barn I used to buy quite a few fish from them uh, back in the day um, I haven't been there for so long now but um, that's just the way it is um, but uh, Koi Water Barn are one of the biggest leaders in the southeast for selling producing buying in koi um, wholesale and for the trade of course and they also held uh, the big shows in Kent um, so yeah I digress <laughs> a lot but you get the idea and um, it's well worth uh, paying something like that a visit in the future and gaining lots of experience okay let's come on and let's get back to the dark colors we were using 
and then the pond invariably is going to be dark and what you see in light in a pond like the light we're seeing here is reflected light and it's all coming from foliage and the sky and other stuff indeed if you stood in the way of it your reflection will become a light source too because essentially this is going down uh, this particular pond was six foot deep and it was in ground and I can remember very very well digging the darn thing it was uh, 15 feet by um, I said 15 by 12 in total and it had about 3300 gallons in it uh, when full and um, I dig the whole thing by hand uh, into a massive skip so I was pushing it out of the hole which at six foot deep you're pushing up one and a half scaffold boards at a slow angle I tell you that's not easy my wheelbarrow loads were getting smaller and smaller um, and for two feet of it, I think, or maybe even more than two feet, I was going, I was just loading clay. Uh, it was an awful experience. And I vowed that if I ever did something like that again, I would most definitely uh, be getting tradespeople in to build the pond for me. I just wanted to sit back and enjoy the fish at the end of it. But I have never done that. <laughs> I've still dug out my ponds but that was an awful uh, pond to have dug by hand on my own and uh, yeah but it was a great I suppose a good experience too I can't complain I enjoyed the fish I enjoyed the time so yeah it's what it was I do remember though that um, when I was uh, just after I finished the digging section of the pond um, I realized that I'd lost my wedding ring um, which you know is shameful but it happened and we could never find it and this was within the year of getting married so um, yeah it didn't go down too well I can assure you guys and girls but um, Nonetheless, we couldn't do much about that. It was gone. We just assumed that it was in a somewhere buried deeply in a six yard skip full of compressed clay. And I wasn't about to start digging that all out and depositing it here, there, and everywhere. I've just fit, forgotten to draw in um, the peck, the fins properly on here. So I just want to come back in with that one and suggest that one through there. I got the rough idea where they were, I just want to put them back in for sure. Yeah, so anyway, we, um, I'm actually, I didn't, I got that all wrong, forgive me, I completely messed up that story. I lost my wedding ring before I even started the pond, so it wasn't buried in um, six yards of anything at all, it was just lost in the garden and we never found it and that's the that's what happened sorry my memory is playing tricks i thought it was during the pond build um and so yeah um we um went to uh i was selling in the states at the time i had a gallery uh on fifth avenue in um the lovely um naples florida uh, beautiful place and uh, it was a year after getting married um, in fact we went into the gallery uh, during our honeymoon and that's when I uh, sort of met the owner and we got going together and all my work went into the gallery and all that sort of stuff but um, there was a beautiful jeweler on Fifth Avenue about a few doors up on the other side of the road to the gallery that I was in and we happened to go in there and we told them the story uh, that I'd lost the wedding ring and that you know full of sympathy of course there were um, but we ordered a new one but it was it was actually this one here uh, which I'm wearing and they put uh, an inscription on the inside of the room which is really sweet it's a lovely inscription um, I won't read it out um, but 
it was a lovely inscription and that was it we had a Catherine and I had a, a mock a mock little ceremony on uh, Naples Beach which I've got to say the beach there is awesome um, and I'll never forget that we had a lovely bottle of uh, drink with us and we just had a wonderful time there and we put the ring on and yeah I, I sort of still got it anyway so the connection to the pond I'm digressing all over the place tonight guys sorry um, but the connection to the pond is quite a simple one I came back home after our um, holiday and or business trip really um, to uh, Florida on this occasion we'd actually honeymooned there a, a year earlier but this was uh, going back for the gallery more than anything else and um, yes yeah, so anyway we decided the pond would be built and we would get started on it and I would bite the bullet and start digging this hole and so the first thing you do with the pond having marked it out is you start digging up the turf you go around with an edging tool and you start digging lifting off the turf and that's what I started doing the very first turf that I dug up, I turned over to put on the on the um, wheelbarrow, and there was my ring, my wedding ring. That's the connection to the to the pond. <laughs> Nothing more. Yeah, how about that? Eh? Uh, it had been there a year, I guess, and um, underground. Um, where it either come off, lost or whatever, and got trodden in, I really don't know. But it was quite a few inches down under the, the dirt. But, um, yeah. Now you notice that pretty much I've been doing this dry brush. I have used very little, if any, um, medium mix for this. I chose not to, I didn't think it needed it. I'm just softening some of the edges here. And that will become quite obvious later on. Just coming down because if you get too much wet into the brush it becomes quite uncontrollable as a pigment to work over the top should I need to and with this painting I will be needing to work over the top of it so um, now that no one's chatting what's up with everybody you all gone to sleep <laughs> was it because you can't get a word in edgeways probably the latter Right, and coming around here with some reds and some greens. Now it is dark, it is predominantly dark, but there are reds and there are greens. And just come in there. This becomes a little bit more of an abstract in a way, but um, hopefully it will still mean something and look like fish. And I'll put a little angle to that little straight edge, a little sharp point there. Um, let's come down. Do need to make the paint move a bit more, so a bit of fluid having to come into the mix. Just bring that down. So I don't want to make too much, so I don't want it to become too uh, thin. But we're nearly there with this block in. We've got a little bit of work over there. Make some more paint up. I've been using, I thought I was using ultramarine blue. It really proves at this level that which blue you use, ultramarine or the phthalo, doesn't make a huge difference, really and truly. Not if honest. Um, you just need to have that deep dark colour. Putting a little bit of that green back in to give it a glow. And that really does make a difference. That's a smashing green, that um, uh, cobalt. Uh, turquoise a little bit of dark around here to ice and put that one in a couple of dark shapes across the fin to start signifying some of those ripples and then we're just going to bash the rest of this in now actually across here there is a little bit of uh, green I'm going to use a bit of um, changing the green to a yellow green so I put a little bit of oxide of yellow into that mix as it comes down this side of the canvas, like so. I'm going to bring a little bit more of that in. It's very yellowish and that will work very, very nicely. I can actually put a little bit more yellow directly into that green. That's probably, yeah, I thought it would be. It's a little bit too much. I'm going to come back in with a bit of red 
and a bit of Thaler Brew, just take that back down a little bit and go back in over the top of that. It's very, very rich, but it was just a little too light. Okay. Now, just check what's going on there, just play around with a few edges. I'm using the brush to go in the direction of which way I want the water. And these are conflicting ripples because you've got a little bit of agitation from this fish and that is meeting with the agitation from this fish. Both are independent in terms of the swirl you're getting. So you're getting a whole mismatch of uh, bits and pieces going on. Ah, did he? Let some comments are coming through. Sorry about that. Um, Okay, thank you for uh, seeing that one. Um, yes, thank you, Tubi. Uh, didn't want to interrupt the ring saga. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm, very expensive lesson. Um, not sleeping. Laugh at that, just doing stuff. Respraying class 350. You know me. Yeah, absolutely. John, I'd probably be doing the same. Kenneth, the... Uh, if the black has a greenish tinge, would thalo green red mix be better? It would. Uh, it would do the job just as well. I'm not using thalo green on my palette tonight. It would do the same sort of job. Um, all we're doing is a pretty much a dark value that we can then influence that with lights later on. Um, I lost the wedding ring in the garden once the whole year. My son found it. Yeah, that's great. Well done. That's uh, good news, when uh, Judy. In my local park, we have some large fish, which I actually saw taking, saw taking on ducks by nipping their feet and returning ducks and pecking. Yeah, I've seen that happen. Uh, I've seen that happen up in um, oh, a place in Suffolk. Um, this they've got a great big town pond at this with big koi and not necessarily koi, but carp, generally carp. And um, yeah, um, they were taking on the ducks quite happily, and the ducks will fight back too. Right now, I'm just going to put in a little bit of a corrupted uh, blue violet, and that got a little bit too much. I'm just taking that down that way, just playing around with this color until I get somewhere where I want it to be. Quite dark, I don't want it too light at the moment. I want to be able to come back in on that and add the light, so I'm using this as a sort of bare bones bluish value cobalt blue essentially up and over there so we get that lovely suggestion of light coming on but we're not actually um, nailing that right down we'll come back in and do that part of the job in a little while and just get this part done and then we can move on to putting some detail into the fish and then we we'll come back and play around with these ripples and other values in this water toward the end. Right, that's we're nearly there. Sorry about this. It's quite an extensive piece of board to cover, um, which probably not helped by the fact that I keep gassing. Um, there we go. Add a little, just a little touch lighter just as it's coming over here I think I can afford to get away with that for the moment I can add more don't get me wrong this is not all of it this is just some of it we're just going to add a little bit just to get a flavor of where we're looking at trying to get this pink ball covered up now, I did consider going in with a darker board but it would have been a little harder for you to have seen the drawing going on so I decided and elected for this lighter board uh, but it just meant that I got a bit more work covering it up um, before we come and uh, work on the fish and the finish as it were but we're nearly there and time for another glug and then we move on to the next bit Uh, 
Now this is harder to cover because I am using a dry brush, but I've told you for why. I just need to keep control on what's going on here. I'll put more colour into there, a bit more light. That's gone a little bit too green in a way, but we can always come back in and just take some of that out with a little bit more of that blue over the top and that will take that green back down and keep it under control. And there we are, we're pretty much done on that part or this section of the painting. Now we can start looking at the fish themselves. Just remembered, saw a video of a young woman who painted a Bob Ross painting onto a side of her van. I thought you, I thought of you. <laughs> no, thank you. I do not do Bob Ross on any day. Um, he was great and he taught a lot of people a lot of things. <laughs> but I'm not a Bob Ross and I certainly haven't got the hairdo. Um, and I'm not his son either, um, who carried on the good work. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, each to their own. Bob Ross had a massive audience. He was one of the world's very, very first um, sort of TV type artists out there doing it. And all credit to the man. Um, and he influenced a lot of people out there and, and still does actually there's a huge following for him so anyway but i'm not one of them <laughs> i just want to put that on the record i'm not one of them um but that's nothing to say anything wrong with that right i'm just going to come in and i'm just going to set up the first look at the reds uh on here now that's quite dull in many respects so i'm going to put in a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white and just punch up. It might be because I'm, <laughs> I just realized I'm using natural red. I didn't realize I had that still on there. Okay, let's take that off. Natural red is a cooler red, um, but I want to come in with some lovely uh, cadmium red, which will work nicely with a bit of yellow in it just to brighten it up. And if I need to, a little bit of white. But white will cool. Be mindful of that. White will be a cooling factor on your red. So just come back in with your red. See there is a difference in the colour. Take the old one off and just want to lay the other one over it to show you. But uh, you put this lovely um, cadmium red light in and you get a different animal working. Like so. And I'm going to come down here with these shapes across there down and I miss out the eye I don't want to paint the eye out I need to keep that and just kind of over the top and the paint has got quite thin there must have been a little bit of a mix in my uh, brush from before a little bit of zest it still I come in with a little bit of lighter color over here because the red turns to a much more fiery red at this point in the head and that's because it's coming over the cartilage. The, uh, the skull is uh, merely a cartilage. And um, yeah, so I brought that down too far. One of my most favorite fish I had was a present from Catherine. Again, it came from Chelsfield. Uh, it was part, they have every so often they had auctions. And we went up there once for one of their auctions on fish. And oh, it's amazing. And um, she bought me one called Flash as a birthday present. And he had this lightning strike right the way down through here. He was called, he was a shower, uh, was the type of fish that he was. He was a shower, S-H-O-W-A. And uh, he was a wonderful example of one. He wasn't a world beater. He was never going to become a champion. And that's not why he would. He was never going to be auctioned off, uh, if that had been the case. But to me, he was just the business. And we both saw him in the pond. And unfortunately, two other people noticed how good he was as well. So unfortunately, we did pay quite a bit of money for him. But he was a present and I we loved him. Sadly, um, he caught something in the pond 
uh, about a year on and um, despite the help from friends I gotta say a little bit of bad advice too from another source but that can happen um, fortunately we lost him but uh, not before I caught several photos of him and I've painted many pictures of him in fact I just sold on my um, some of you may know I've been doing this artist pledge and selling some of my uh, paintings at a severely reduced price and I sold this morning a watercolour of Flash that I'd done a few years ago uh, well not that long ago actually I think it was only last year I did that and yeah um, lovely fish never forget him and um, just sadly that we lost him but I'm going to come in with a little bit of magenta into this red and I'm just going to come down into the back end of this Garomo to give it this lovely deeper colour and a lovely violety flush here and this just this beautiful pigment alone will suggest that it is a Garomo and um, Garomos can come dark light um, and um, a variety of different sort of values I'm going to put a little bit of deeper red in here now this is not because it's a Gromo, this is just where it's going deeper and away into the water. So I'm just going to take out some of the pure red in this part and just knock it back a little bit and start doing that to others, other areas of the other fish too. I will change some of it, but I just wanted to put that in. Okay, where are we? Um, Right, well, let's catch up on the thing. I've uh, seen him yet. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, I remember that Nancy Kaminsky, my lord, yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> yes, Bob Ross did have some strange very stuff in his brush on his or as one of the mind. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's strange how things long been passed away. Um, and I think his son, I'm not sure if his son's still alive or not, I hope he is. Um, but he carried on in the uh, thing as well. Right, okay, I shall carry on. You keep on talking about Bob Ross. I've got no problem with that at all. Right, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow together, but it's going to be a bit of dull yellow. It's got a little bit of flat orange into it, and that is just going to be the sort of deeper base part of the back here. Now, the fish, uh, when they get a lot of cartilage, they do look a little yellowish, a little orangey. Um, but this is more to do with the depth away from the top of the water than any other reason. And I'm going to put a little bit in the base of this fin or tail fin here. And a little bit around here. Now this often also, this cartilage area of the skull, does get yellowish around the eye, up through the back here and down here towards the mouth, and across to the mouth and across there. Now that has got quite dirty, I'm not worried about it. A little bit across there and under there and all the way here is going to get darker as well so I'm just going to put a little bit of light under there like so all right that's as far as I want to go with that at the moment maybe just a bit into these fins just there and in that one and we'll stop beat the heck out of it uh, I started somewhere home I <laughs> I think you have. Um, I remember that Nancy Kaminsky. I was more into watching her than I ever was Bob Ross. I think I didn't watch Bob Ross until I got um, some of the early satellite TV type things. And I forget what they were now. But I used to catch him on some of those channels, those earlier channels. But um, yeah, I haven't seen... I know on the YouTube, all his repeats are all over the show. 
Right, and coming in with a little bit of a dirty, grungy, bit of red, bit of grey, bit of yellow, just to mess up some of these on the veining here of this fin. That's probably, if I'm honest, a little dark. I want to cool that up. I want to bring that back. But I'm going to put some darker marks into it. I'm just trying to suggest the shape. Lose some of my drawing as well, which would be good. Take that into there and let that come all the way into there, like so. And the same here, but it does duck out of sight a little quicker and becomes a little darker a little sooner. Let's come that in there. Okay. And this is still blocking it. We're still uh, playing around with the idea of this and getting it all blocked in before we start putting all the final information in. Okay, let's come back in with some shadow colour. Going to make that quite cool but a bit bluer. We've got a lot of nice blue values in there. Going to put that in. Shadow side under this fish. And right up to and in just before the gill plate goes all the way down through there under the tummy and back all the way up into there. Now I've got my red mixed up into that, which I in a ideal situation I would have done. So I'm just going back in and I'm going to put that over. I'm going to put a little bit of yellowish color, not red, a little yellowish and the blue back in. Just to get that away from that violet colour a little bit. Like that. We can still play around with that later, it's not a big deal. Up under its throat too, needs the same sort of colour. Bring that down. Very angular at the moment. We can soften any of this into that gill plate there. And under these um, pectoral fin. Through there and in the base of this one too which is turned this way this one is turned that way he's spun that round because he's he's using these two to control his pitch as it were his angle the tail is giving him the push up to the surface this one is turned back the other way and as a stabilizer and that's how it's being used at the moment in this position. And you can see the angle of these, they're literally, it's almost like there's the normal position and he's done that to it. He's turned it round and he's using that and that's controlling his movement. And the other fish is doing exactly the same. Right, let's just come in with this one. And there is a lovely set of blue colour. I'm going to use a little bit of that cobalt teal into that. I might increase it, but it's got a lovely feel of green blue across that, which I'm going to use. I'm going to make it quite soft as these disappear into the water and see how that goes. I'm going to put the same into the top of the dorsal fin on this one. We can't see the dorsal too well on the other one, but a little bit of colour in here, which is probably all of it that we see apart from the bony cartilage at the start. And that will go in somewhere there, like so. And the fish is starting to develop. To, to develop. A little bit of light, and it's a little bit cooler. We put a little bit of um, ultramarine blue across the body of this one. It's just got a lovely little sense of blue against the scales. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to have to tame that a little bit. Tame that with a little bit of red into that. Just soften it up to there. And be careful that I don't go too much. The idea of the patterns on a fish is that they should remain nice and crisp. Now this one is obviously being eaten into because of the ripples in the water. I think that's possibly a little too bluish up here. I'm going to take some back and come in with a bit more white at that point. 
and not, I'm not going to put too much into it. I don't want to do too much right now. I'm fearful of picking up the red too soon. But the idea of the pattern on a fish is that it remains nice and crisp. Uh, a fish where colour on scales fish especially, um, where that tends to um, bleed into the surrounding white uh, of the fish, then it's pretty much a demerit. Bring that through here, get rid of that bit of blue that's just popped in off the brush. So yes, nice crisp patterns make a winning combination when it comes to koi fish. A bit of blue over the eye. And then we're getting quite yellowish again as it comes down over here. There's the other eye going to put in about there. Push that in there. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Not a problem. Quick repair in a minute. We'll get rid of that. Then that can come down into the face. Uh, where are we? Uh, da, 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 da. Happy little trees, happy little clouds, happy accidents. Oh yes, those two. There's a complete conversation going on way outside my painting tonight, guys. All right, I'm going to bring that to there and make that eye socket a little bit more pronounced. And then across here with a shape. There will be a little repair there needed. And it comes down and into the mouth area there. Now it is distorted on mine so I think I'm just going to change a couple of bits. I think I did it when I pulled that forward. Um, so I'm going to alter. I don't want to alter this. I like all this. I'm going to alter that there. I'm going to redraw this aspect to the head here. Bring that round across there and there's the bottom lip there and do it in that fashion like so. I think that's better. I think that works. We've got a couple of bubbles which we can sort of just tend to. That's a bit of food but we can make it a bubble. And we've got all these lovely little bits of water we're going to be putting in very very soon. I just need to get this area sorted out first. I'll come back in with a bit of dark just to shape up the eye there, come back in there, and down there. Okay. Now the red on this fish is also a little bit out. So I'm just going to bring that across to there. Change that shape just a little bit. And that comes nice sharp round there. A little bit pink. Let's come back with some of the red. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We're okay with that. We're back on track with that. <sighs> do I ramble, Judy? I do, don't I? I'm terrible at rambling. I know I do. All right. I'm going to come back in here, a slight more yellow into that than I had. Across the top here. Back into some of these shapes. Nice and crisp if you can keep them so. And check the shape of this as it comes out. To the eye. And into the top there of the face, a little sharp there. I've got the pattern out a little bit, I think. I could do with changing that a little. So let's just come back in and do that right now. Oh. Just going to come back in with a bit of yellow, a bit, bit of the red, the right red would be good. A bit of yellow into that. And let's just 
This is going to go off a little bit pink, unfortunately, because I did put way too much white there to start. But hopefully we can put a bit of yellow into that now and bring that pinkish red back to where we want it a little bit brighter. I think that works. Makes it quite electric on the top. A little shape of a bump in it there. No angle there, a little scoop there, it comes down and around like that. Okay, that's fine, I've got no problem with that. We've got a lovely colour over the top and that literally disappears to there. Now I'm going to leave that brush loaded with the red just in case we need to go back in uh, and I need a glove. Hmm. All right. Now I've got to press on pretty fast because time I see is grabbing away from us. I'm going to come in with some greens and I want to put in some dull, dirty greens into some of these here. Not that green there, that's not doing it. So let's put a bit of red to that. Change that green. And just come up with some of these stems. Not the best green in the world for this, I don't think. But I'm going to carry on with it. I'm going to stick with it. We put the lights in later. And way off in there. And then we can come back in with anything we don't want to make green. We can come back in with the black and change all of that. There's quite a bit of dark in here which will become blacker. And a bit more light to the green as they're becoming obviously into the leaf shape. We can look at that in a minute. We just wanted to get some rid of the last part of this board more than any other reason. Now, if the numbers of viewers suddenly drops, it's because I reckon you've all gone off to watch Bob Ross videos instead. Right, I think that's getting a little bit too close to the fish. I want to knock some of that back out. So, I will come back in with some of the darks that we had in here. Red dark. Let's just take some of this back out back to the watercolour that we were using. Using back in with the brown and the blue umber. Uh, sorry, the umber and the blue, should I say. Let's come back in with some of these darker values in here. Just come back in here because it's getting a little bit too uh, green, too light towards the fish tail. I didn't want that to happen so I'm going to Take some of that stuff out, play around with some of these, and take them back towards this part. Um. Okay, that's probably good enough for the moment. We can come back and start exploring some of these shapes in a little while. And there's a lovely a bit of this deeper blue. Uh, where this uh, dorsal fin is coming down here, it sort of comes all the way through and then just folds over there. They're very, very long. They're very tall. They come down and they carry on for quite a while down the back, 
before they sort of disappear just before where the tiles start so you do get to see quite a bit of it on a fish ah oh, well done Wendy <laughs> uh, well I would have gone if the Crystal Palace game had been on TV haha <laughs> <laughs> lucky for you it's not well I can't judge you upon that Luke I'm not a football fan so I apologize to anybody who is but I definitely am not it's one game I detest in all honesty the watching of and the playing of I don't know bothered either way I put a little bit of light into there and now we can start playing around with some of this watery shape that we're getting playing around with some of the little shapes in the water and the little shapes on the fish that gives it you know we've got to create these things they're not sitting on top of the water they're sitting under the water moving under the water and we've got to display that in our painting we got to make people believe that down there for the dorsal and a few of the fins that radiate out from the dorsal We will just start on this one, a little bit more light to it, and a little light down there, which we did put in, and we're going to put more of a yellow. And I'm going to go back in this time with some cad yellow deep and a little bit of the mix up of um, oxide of yellow. I want to see how that looks. I'm not too sure about it yet. I think it's going to be too aggressive, so I'm going to come back in with a lot of some of that yellow but a lot of white to that and just want to play around with some of these shapes in here that's a lot better it's sort of like a dirty mustard i was looking for and i think that's probably it like so and now we want to come up and punch some of these sort of shapes into the water that start to suggest the movement of the water the flow of the water and just a little wiggly line through there meeting to the top and that's all we're doing. We're just now picking up detail. We're looking at where the light parts are, where the dark parts are. And some of it we will bring together and mix it up. down the side here it's getting a bit green not the end of the world I suspect there's a lot of uh, phthalo blue in that mix so I'm going to come out of it for a minute because I can sense there's a lot of phthalo in there coming out to the edge of the gill plate and it does get quite yellowish again very dull yellow, a lot of blue and almost a green in that yellow too. A lot of shadow coming up through here. I'm going to change the shape of that in there so we can just eat into some of that red. Carefully we'll pick it up and give that more shadow there and a little bit under the mouth there. A little bit of light and definitely got a lovely light across here and more than I'm showing. Let's come back in with some light, nice white light across there, or off-white light. And that will come down to the bar door, which we'll put in there. And this one, which will go off there. And I want to put in a lovely, I can use that small round brush very carefully I had earlier. And put in a lovely now the blue on these is always for me I use a piece of neat cerulean blue or th uh, phthalo blue and I don't need much but it's that blue that really works across the eye and I put that in there like so I'm going to use the same color over on this eye here like so you can't see it on the other eyes. You can't see that eye at all, just the socket, and very much the same with that. You can only just see the socket. 
So that's all we need of that. <laughs> it's a strange thing, but that's all I wanted. And um, that was it. I'm going to come back in with a little bit uh, in here. I don't know if this is going to work or not. But I just love the sense of the blue in that tail. I'm just tapping it away and blending it away with my fingers. Happy tails, like my happy trees. Um, what is it with everybody with things that are going on TV? This is the only TV that's important, people. <laughs> Right, okay, I wish. I'm going to come in here. Ooh, what have I got on there? There's a bit of... Okay, interesting. I'll put a bit of dark up round here. Up into the mouth area there. And a very strong bit there, because I did have it further over here, but I've shortened the mouth, so I've got to bring that back round. Like so down around there take that away a little bit try and keep that as rich as I can don't want it getting too degraded with light not at that point and up into there and under there we can isolate these little bubbly bits in a minute there is a dark underneath between the two sets of fins and there's a little displacement of color and light there on this one, like so, it comes down and up into there, like that, and that goes all the way down, but we've got to run some light through that. So I'm just leaving those two little areas there, just to suggest we've got to put some light back through, like so. Okay, it's going to get a little trickier in a minute, this painting, but we are working forwards not a problem and just let you know that it's sort of you've got to start looking at all these reflective reflective refractive light sources that are displacing color and the form as well very much the same situation if you're painting somebody with glasses on the thicker the rims the more the eyes will be completely uh, different to how they should appear or how you think they should appear and put in a few strikes of light through there of this color and that will come up into this part of the fin here which I haven't actually given it enough body yet I haven't given it enough so I need to do more but I just want to bring some dark into this red like so Cheers, Brownie. <laughs> right, okay, let's carry on before you all migrate to um, Dave on TV and look at yesteryear pictures, um, which we don't want you doing. Right, I'm just going to bring that light edge to that fin down through there. And there's the other one. Now, that actually comes out a lot more of an angle than I've given it. I'm going to take that to there, take that off. Give that a bigger edge there. And then there is, this is a Sankey fish, but it has dark um, marks coming out into this fin, and it really shouldn't do. That's the preserve of uh, showers. Sankeys have clear white fins, or should do. The fact that this one has a little dark uh, colouring emanating from the base of the fin itself suggests that it's sort of bit of mixed blood in a sense. Um, but you know, all fish. Uh, this is the thing about buying koi. I've seen people. Uh, there were there were stories a few years ago of some of the big koi breeders, including the guy who owns the Chelsfield one, uh, going out to. Um, uh, China, to Japan in the beginning of the season when all the breeders open up their shops for the big shows to people start buying for the shows and you know buying big fish that they want to 
put on, bring on in their own ponds, all these things. And a lot of the British breeders and buyers used to go out there very, very early on and spend weeks out there visiting all their favorite koi breeders in these huge great mud ponds. And bring that to there and just tap in there and that will be the all we see of that sorry i digress um yeah and you know stories abound of sort of two three four hundred thousand pounds on one fish and the fact that they're shown the fish and it's put immediately back in the pond never to be seen again until the show and then at that point it's brought out, it's shown, it wins grand champion, and then it's sold. And and it's just for the accolade, it's just bizarre um, in the extreme in my book. But it, that's the sort of thing that used to be going on. Um, anyway, I'm digressing again. Um, I'm not counting the ribs on these fins, I'm just putting some in. Yeah, I think it's actually quite novel that people would go to all that trouble, all that money to fly out to Japan in the hotels and all the boozy bits and, you know, and having fun like that, uh, which, sure, no problem with any of that, but to buy a fish for such extraordinary amounts of money and to never actually see it. No, I don't know who that is, but uh, what are we talking about? I've lost this way back, looking good, back shortly, chores, okay, Paul is doing, I'm the, is Melbourne still with us? That's what I want to know, poor man was up at four in the morning to see this, and all he's getting is you guys talking about Bob Ross, and detentions, whatever next, Melbourne, are you still with us, sir? I hope you are. And I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing. Now let's put a bit of light into this now. Let's start bringing in some more detail. And some radiating fins. Like so. And a little bit of more light through there. Playing around with warms and cools. Yellows, reds and pinks. Much more light on the top of there. And more under there. All these as it's turning in the water, catching the light. Um, <laughs> oh dear. John, we need to have a discussion about what you got up to at school, mate. I think... Uh, I think there's a few more stories there that are not being told. We need to find out a little bit more about this. A bit more light down through on this too. And it's sort of hazy, sort of duller light going backwards from there. A little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. Dull values here. But nonetheless, they're not dark, so they're dull values. Very, very soft, and they just disappear as the black takes over. They disappear out of sight in that fashion. Something of that nature. Very, very long lead uh, mark there. Okay. Uh, hmm. I'm going to read this chat back after I finish because I'm um, impressive what's, what's being said and done. I'm coming back in uh, with some lovely blues on these tiles. Just quickly suggesting some of the um, lovely uh, um, bony structures in there and they do lose out to nothing. And they get lighter at the top here. 
and into the yellow too so they start turning a little yellowish as they come towards the base of the fin and then the edge here I need to soften it I want to tap in a little bit of light actually I'm going to use my dagger brush for that I think that will work very well and just tapping in and losing the very end of these into the edges of the water just softly and into there just very softly losing information Dragging some of that dark into it quite happily. Into here. Mixing up what you see and what actually is. I need to pick up a little bit of dark into there just to help that a little bit more because I'm taking material away as much. I'll look at that again in a minute. It's quite dull under there too. I'll put a little bit of deeper reds, a little bit of the blue. Just come back in there. I want some bit more yellow to it as well. Like a dirty mustard colour, it wouldn't hurt with some of that oxide yellow going into that. That would make that nice and deep and dark at that point. Just trying to lose as much of I as I can into the sort of ether, as it were, the water. Just trying to lose, just fudge up the egg and edges. <clears throat> but every time I do that, I keep losing some paint, which is annoying because it's causing me to have to repaint edges in, and I didn't want to do that. It's just a case of reworking it a little bit more. Okay. How are we doing for time? So I think we're cracking on. And I've bought a couple. <laughs> no, we're down to 18 people, which means two of you are watching Bob Ross films. And that is just unacceptable. I'm sorry, I'm not having any more of this. It's going to have to stop. A little bit of light into there. And I'm going to come back in a little bit of dark under the eye. We've got down to 17. All right. Eye and an eye in there. Actually, that's got a lot of fluid to that. It's going to run. So let's get rid of that. I saw that come off the brush. My fault, not paying attention. Now come back in again and put that in there. And we can use some of these darks now. We're pretty much done with the red. So let's have a look at some of the patterns. Now this has got a bit of dark black across there. We want to put that in. And I'm looking at all these. As I know what's happened is the uh, zest that has been spilling. And it's mixing with some of my paint. Which is causing a few problems. A little bit of colour into there. And I think there is a sort of a shape whisk around there. We're going to put that in. And a little bit of the bluish colour that's coming down over the back of this. It's not black, but it's a little bluish. It's giving rise to the lovely patterns across here on this garoma. And in over the back here, there's a little bit of dark there. Bit of deep darks into some of these veins, some of these um, ribs. As well. 
and darker in here. I'm using the small brush only because it's in my hand. You could use others as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, I think he's secretly watching Bob Ross because I think he's a bit of a fan. <laughs> more dark under here let's just come in here and let's cool this down a little bit more lots of brushes in my hand which really doesn't help let's come in and that's needs to be a bit cooler in there i'm going to bring some darker values into here and uh, right underneath here and then they're going to start mixing almost totally at one point just a value shade above the water at the back there I'm just going to put that in up to there. Up around the edge of this gill plate. Top of that fin, just a little bit of a mark there. More into the chin and the throat through here. And just want to that this is a distortion and I haven't got the distortion yet there's a dark in here let's get that into there and a little bit of dark coming back into there distorting up the shape of the fish and that comes distortion into that part there down there like that right um <coughs> And it also comes into the fish about there. So there's quite a few distorted shapes and patterns working on this one. And that sort of comes around into a curvature. Something like that. That works. And it's all starting to build these wonderful little shapes. A little shape around there, which we're going to put a bit of a bubble in. that point there and darken up around that little uh, barbell down the side of that fin and that's got a funny shape to it too which I want to put in like that very hard shape and it is a very hard mark through there like that and under here very dark again Lifting up to the edge there. One or two darts going into the throat. So we come up to there and in and in. And it's where the water is starting to have an effect on the ripples. I'm going to start suggesting some of those now. I do need though it to... Ooh, I do need to just clear off this palette. It's got very, very wet with uh, the sloshing out of the brush. I'm just going to ease that away, get rid of some of these colours. I can remix. Unfortunately, I have to, but there we go. Let's get rid of that cloth. And let's just come back in and remix some of these colours again. That this time, not so wet as they've become. All right, I'm going to put some green into some of these too. And looking up in here, we're going to start messing some of this up. Some lovely shapes come around this way. Use a bigger brush, really, it would be much better. So what we got? We've got some reds, some blues. We keep working at this now until we are about where we want it to be. Lovely darts coming in here. And we'll start using some of that green again into one or two of these places. And dark in there. Under there, up into here, and 
so. Look at that towel sweep into there a little bit more. I don't mind that actually, it picked up a little bit and smudged it into the background. That's pretty good. I use the same again if I can. I'm just going to come around the and just gently go over that, like so. Take off some of the excess of paint and just gently tap into this area here. Drag it away and into it. Just trying to suggest that it's sort of disappearing into the darkness of the pond. Like so. Hard to see under the lights if that's worked or not. I think it has. Just take it a little bit out this way. Okay. Same thing again here, just wants a little bit darker to there. And some darks in here. And so. Then you've got a bit of a black under there coming into the colour of this marking. It's a little dark tap into the red just about there. We'll put that in. Um, it'll probably take about three or four days with the current heat that we've got in the country. Um, my ores are never very very thick and so they do tend to dry quite fast um, so probably ready to sell uh, where are we on now um, Monday aren't we so probably by um, Thursday I would have thought that it would be pretty much dry and um, yeah ready to sort of thinking about uh, advertising well I tend to if I'm putting them on the pledge they go up when they're wet because obviously I just tell the new owner when it sells that it will be a few days while the paint's drying um, and that's normally acceptable for most people they, they accept that it's a fresh painting and it's going to dry as an oil um, but yeah other than that um, yeah, a good few days really I suppose to do that John Mix out some of these colours here, it's quite warm. I've got it a little bit too pink. I just wanted to suggest some of that sort of lights in there to the side of the head and some of the beautiful. But I want to try and blend as much as I can like that into some of the background because it's where the fish is going away and underneath us. It's going away and under. It's round. It's not flat. And that's got to be portrayed. A little bit of for the mouth there. Normally a little bit pinker that. A little bit of redder than that. And the same for this one here. It's not nearly red enough on there. And a little red underneath there too would not help. Well, it will help, sorry. Okay. Uh, right, where are we? Pushing on. I don't know what the time is. I've no idea how long we've been going. Uh, can I see somewhere where it says? Nope. But if we started at seven, it's now twenty-two. 25 to 9, so just over the hour and a half, so not so bad. Right, I'm going to put a few light bits into here, into this blue, suggesting that there is water movement at this point, and it's going to come across there like so. 
and this is where we're starting to abstract the information I hope one two three there clean marks if you can not always easy but clean marks and I'm going to put that one in through there like so tap here tap miss a bit tap there there's another bit and they get a little bit duller they get a little bit more violet I think looking at them I'm going to put a little bit less brightness into some of these as they're coming away which I think will work very very nicely And quite a big stir up through there. Nice big curve round with the brush. Again, you can tease around this. <laughs> or too much, the case may be. That needs to come back in. And I actually want to glaze over. I want to put some blue violet in there. It's quite dark, but there's quite a lovely blue. <laughs> Not quite like that. Ah, oh, silly boy. Okay, let's come back in with that. Not a problem. Probably the easiest thing to do that instead of try and work it out is to just wipe it off and come back over that bit with some dark. Or indeed, just go back into it with the darker values that I was seeking to put there in the first place. So I just wanted to put that sense of warm bluish colour, a cool bluish colour, sorry, into the water at this point. I just saw it and I just wanted to put some in. And it goes away into these leaves too. Now, until you start really looking at some of these colour values, do you start seeing? all the lovely uh, different colors of blues and greens and different colors into the water surface all right so and that comes in a bit there but maybe a little greener and through there Now any green against this red of course is going to make it pop um, and that's really good so if you want to come in here with some of the real greeny values They will pop against the reds, of course. Okay, uh, I'm going to come back in. It's going to degrade the blue a little bit, but I'm going to come back in with some of these blues. Turning the brush as I go, as you can see. And that's picking up a lot of light off of there. Off. This must just be bridging the water at that point. Okay, get a little bit of light off there, which is nice. And then we've got some lovely ripples coming through. Some of these can even join up like that, it doesn't really make a lot of odds. And they just will just start to ghost up through there. I hardly see them. And they also come almost off the back of this and then across funny jaggy angles through here touching onto there let's put that back in let's get rid of that 
There's one coming across there. Something like that. Another one. Um, it's hard to tell which is what of one fish or another. I think that's part of that one. And a little bit around there, that there. Soften some of the marks. And these are getting deeper. So I'm going to put some more blue in here and take these away. There's there's definitely some more in here, which I'm going to put in now. Like that. And then the colour seems to sort of go off out the way. Almost the same colour. It's almost reversing the situation on the lights and the darks. I'm going to let that just disappear to nothing. Nice subtle soft blend into the corner of the painting. Come back in and put a bit over here, a little bit lighter. And that gives rise to the reason that, that there's a little darker element there. I'll put that in. And let that disappear. Nice. So. And then bring some of this round here. Breaking it up in places. And it comes down into the deeper, darker water. And then we've got the same thing happening in here. a nice effect that's going on. I'm going to put a little bit more green to some of this, some of that cobalt green again. Um, Ken, no I don't varnish when it's dry. I uh, have never enjoyed varnishing. I've never had a good time with it. Um, I have come close to destroying some major paintings I've done in the past with trying to varnish. So um, the only varnish I like is, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> oh. <coughs> excuse me, everybody. <laughs> What's next? Well, I couldn't stop that one. Um, the only varnish I really like is a matte varnish. And there is a, a way of putting that on. Not for the faint hearted, has to be said. Um, it has to be slightly warmed. Uh, to cure correctly and uh, that when you buy matte varnishes from companies they they don't sort of say that um, you put it on but invariably I'm sure we've all had situations where um, sort of varnish has gone on it's got thick in places it's shiny in others not so shiny in others I'm talking about matte of course Gloss always just obviously is gloss, and that's the end of the matter. You get what you put on. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I've never enjoyed the experience of trying to varnish a picture successfully. I'm sure it's there are people out there that would uh, frown upon that statement of me from me, but that's how it is. I don't varnish. Um, and I suppose really... You know, if you're in a smoke-free environment, you don't really need to worry too much about it. Anyway, I would have thought. Um, if you smoke heavily, then, yeah, I can see how um, varnishing would assist the picture's longevity. But I don't see it. I received a picture recently from somebody uh, from the Pledge. Lovely picture, but it was varnished, so... You know, I don't like that in a picture. I might have thought second about it. I might have had different ideas about it um, had I known that. But it's not. It's a beautiful picture. And so I'm not taking anything away from that. Just wish it hadn't been varnished. But, um, right. 
and I'm going to come in. There's a lot more light in here than I'm, I've been allowing for, so I'm going to come in with that. Um, it's actually creating more colours and more variety in the painting as a whole, so I'm glad I've seen it, and I'm glad I'm using that. Um, and it just freshens up a really darkish looking picture. So I'm going to do as much as I can with that. Take that all the way into that fin there. Um. Yeah, I think that's fair comment, Wendy. Thank you. Um, hopefully, that's the idea, <laughs> he says. Right, keep going, keep pushing. It's going to do the same for in here as well. I'm just going to lighten some of this up, play around with some of these marks. Give the water some movement, I hope. Some blues and some lights and some other values. A bit more of that green would be lovely, I think. Especially coming in here against some of this red. That's nice under here. Now, I said there was a lot more light, which we would be putting in. I'm going to start that process in here now. I'm going to put a lot more, uh, it, uh, more cobalt blue. And I'm, it's all mixed up with cerulean, unfortunately. My, my cobalt has got a little bit contaminated. So I'm going to go the best I can with that. And I think that's pretty good. Quite happy with that. Nice little sweeps with a nice flat brush. Nice little return of colour through there. Gently go down the outside. I've gone down with the main colour. I'll do it again over here so you can see it. Come down with the main colour like so. Into there. Let it blend together. But then just gently come down the outside and almost fusing the two areas together. Breaking down the edge a little bit and softening it off into the background. Now I can't see it as you guys can see it, but I hope we're doing okay. A bit more light into some of these um, ripples using the flat blade edge of the brush as I do it. It's a little bit too bright, maybe. I'm not too worried. That really is a bright mark through there, but I'm gonna. Put a bit of blue to that too, just to lose it a bit. And there's still water between them. Um, there are some sort of lovely effects through here. Not too much disturbance. Whether it's just been nullified where the two sets of ripples have come together and one's cancelled the other out a little bit, I'm guessing that might be the reason. I don't know. Now there's a lot of lights on some of these. I want to bring some of these up a bit more. Little twists, little jerks. Mm 
in the water. Very quick little marks. I know my ripples are slightly different to those that, that are in the painting. A little bit of light into one and two up through the back here. Tough little bubble marks which we can put in. Little blind little bubbles. I'm going to put one in there. Little refractive lights from the water. There needs to be more light. I put blue down there. I don't think it should have been blue. I think it should have been something else. And I'm going to go back in on that in a moment. But what I haven't done, I, I've got so much more to do to these. I'm not sure how the time is going to play out. I want to put a bit more light on top of this. That maybe we have to either carry on if people are happy about that or um, come back to it. I want to put a bit of green together and I am going to be using a little bit of the um, cobalt green violet, uh, uh, not the cobalt violet, the cobalt turquoise. Just going to come in here with some of these fine shapes. as quickly as I can. one that comes up across these others and put that in. I'm going to give that slightly more light on the edge of it. And this one needs quite a bit of light into the structure of the leaf. Maybe a bit cooler. This one will do a little bit more under it, not so much on there. We have a nice little shape popping off underneath the water there and some more grungier colours as they disappear underneath uh, all the water and one coming out this way again disappearing as is this one That'll be alright for those at the moment. We can actually add to that. It's been fascinating watching and painting come together. Highlight the evening. Sorry. Story about your wedding ring. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's alright. Um, we will keep going as long as people want to watch. And then when I get too tired I'll stop. Just want to come over some of these with a bit of dark. And then, if I can make that happen, I'll come in here with a really dark colour that is a little reflection across the water of a couple of them. Maybe making it a little redder. That's not working. 
come back and rethink that just a bit. Bring another piece in through there. I think that's fair enough. Okay, that works. All right. Now we're sort of homing in on the nuts and bolts and the little bits and pieces that need to finish this off. I bring a little bit more of a shape or two in here. Some of these are coming up this way, causing other colours, or not colours, but marks to appear. Crisscrossing. It's hard to, it's like a cross hatching, it's very hard to achieve, but you persevere, you can get it there. Um, okay, and let's look at um, some real bright lights of blue that are going to be in here. I'm just going to come in, I want to put in some really bright, as you're going to add a little bit of lemon to that really just try and punch up the highlight in there. Thicker paint. And little taps of jewels in the whole thing. I don't want to overdo it, but I can see some of it. And there's a little bit on some of this here. Now it's making the fish at this point a little dull. So I do need to go back in on one or two points there. Let's just clean the brush. Let's go back in and bring up some of the highlights with a bit more yellowish into the white. And let's just come back in and bring to life some of these bits that are very close to the surface that have been a little bit neglected through there. That beautifully lit on that fin, and the barbels a little bit on this lower mouth, like so, and we're almost there. Well, there's always something you can do. I say we're almost there, we're never quite always there. But you get the idea, we're almost there. And a little bit of light up in here. On this one. Tracing around. A little bit of light through there now. Let's just have a look at that. That sort of comes over that down through there and we start to lose it. And again up in here, a little bit of light lost. Let's put some of that back. And a little bit of light underneath, which we again have lost. Put some of that back. 
and this fin. I'll put that in like so. I'll leave it like that. It's not quite bends over more, but my picture doesn't show that. I'm not overly worried by that at all. Put a bit of light on the front of the eye, give that some life. Um, and a bit of light in here. There's a lot of yellow, and I want to bring that up a bit more. I'm going to play around with that just for a little bit. And some light there, which I actually not got. I still haven't got it. So let's go back in. Mix a little bit more of that bright colour up. And let's just come back in with this shape again. And nail that into there. And then some of these marks into here. A little bit on the eye over there, got a little bit dull. Some of these are just lost. And some of them have lost because I've dirted them. And some of them have lost because the decision in the initial part, they weren't bright enough. And when you put other brighter colors next to them, it does then tend to make them quite dull. So just worth noting and watching. Um, I'm going to suggest a little barbel going off there onto one side. You can't see that one at all. A little bit of light just reflecting around here. Under the eye, under that. A little bit of light. Bring the difference to these two a little closer together. Put a little bit of yellow into some of this which works, takes it totally off the blue a little bit. That's no bad thing. There's a lot of ripples and shapes and marks in here which just need a little bit more observation. Into the, some of the subtleties of this water. some of it across the red here too. Now there is a little bit of very dirty mix of skin colour that's coming around here which I've missed. I'm going to put that in. It's like a very dull mustard colour that's coming down. I've already painted the lines through so I'm just going to suggest they're in. Like that, and they disappeared to nothing anyway. It's just suggesting the edge of the red pattern on the fish, and the skin would there be white, but because it's so far underwater, it's sort of turned to this mustard color. With some marks as the water is breaking out the shape of the fish at that point. We're almost there. Keep saying that, and I might believe it in a minute. Need to look, that's lost a bit of shape through there. And that's got a bit more of a lead to it too.
Okay. Sorry, I've gone a bit quiet then. I was just trying to concentrate to get the last parts of this working. Now I'm just looking at this part here on the back. There's a real, I think I've nailed the sort of shape about right. Uh, sort of really broken up away with the light. And just a few colours suggesting water that's sort of going, causing light that's going around this way. Just so much going on with it. Just to emphasize a couple of these there. Uh, what does PFF da, da, da mean? I don't know. The blue of the water highlights are really contrasting with the orange. Would you say that was the main interest of the painting? Yeah, I think I think this is it's not just the main interest of the painting. Uh, Teresa, it's also the main interest of why we love Koi. Um, we love colour relationships, we love blues and reds, we love colour, we love complementaries, we don't understand fully why but we just do. Um, and when you see a pond water which is dark like this with blue accents of the sky, the fish coming up and they've got this blue around these lovely reds and they just, they're just like swimming jewels and you know because of that it's um i mean if it was a, a just a dull brown what they call a magoi a black one or um um uh, things like that then you don't give them half a look they don't look as good but when they come up and they've got all these wonderful colors of reds and whites on them and golds and yellows and all this sort of thing happening then we're just drawn to those lovely um, forms in the water. And that's, yeah, so essentially, yes, uh, you're right, it's the, it's the reds and the um, blues, as it were, that are working for us. Just putting one or two more taps in here. Needed to blend that away a bit. It got a little bit forgotten. So let's just get rid of that around the gill plate. So, turned out a nice painting. I'm really quite pleased with it, I've got to say. A little bit of dark in here would go very, very well. A little bit of weight under the eye. Just through there. And up in here. Quite happy with that. Uh, I'm missing half this chat. I do, do apologise, guys, that I'm missing the chat. But uh, hopefully, you forgive me. I just got totally concentrated on what's going on in this. And a little bit of dark I noticed up in here. I haven't quite got the pattern as the photograph. But I don't worry about that. It's nice enough. It works. I'm going to put a little slight bluish under here. You can just see a little bit extra on the eye there. And also on that part there. Final look-see. Um, and see where we are. Change that shape of that bubble. I'm not sure if I like that at all yet. Um, I 
we'll see. I might leave that in, I might take it out, who knows. Uh, I haven't had as much time on the foliage as maybe I'd like. I'd like to maybe sort of create a little bit more of the form so it looks a little bit more as it should, but we're not too far away from it. Not so bad. I'm not sure of the name of these plants, but uh, we always call them soldiers, water soldiers. I'm not quite sure what they are. Anyway, I think that's probably a good enough rendering of the plant itself um, with time and a lot more of it than we could have probably done a little bit more. I'm going to suggest a little bit of that coming under the water there and under there. It just looks like there's stuff that's not catching as much light and is under the water as I said. Right, you can be the judge of those. Ah, okay, where are we at? I need a glug, I know that. Soldiers or soldiers? You need to put your glasses on, Judy. <laughs> I think. I'm teasing. Yes, I think they are soldiers. That's what we used to call them anyway. Definitely want to put a bit more blue in that eye and on this one. They just they really do have that little edge lead of blue. Like that. Determinism. I think my tail has gone a little bit drab on one. I want to put a little bit more light into this one I think it could be better I think that's better this one I think is fine Possibly a little light along here. Just finishes that off. That's okay under there. I'm still not sure about the bubble. Um, but I think pretty much it's pretty much done. Um, so a couple of coming across like so. Which it's indicated, but it's not sort of stated in that way. They are just, they are there. All right, I think you know. I mean, we could carry on with this, and I could carry on for another few hours. But uh, yeah, I saw something about that, John, um, on the earlier news that they were threatening that the pubs couldn't open and clubs couldn't open uh, as people had hoped because of the spike um, so are you saying is it gone back into full lockdown is this is this a full reversal of measures up in Leicester and are they sort of talking of other areas or just Leicester quite scary really when you consider that um, you know all these countries are now sort of spiking again um, which is quite a worry. I'm going to put a little bit of deep dark green colour up in here 
like that. It was too harsh and I'd lost a bit of it. I would like that. That's just a nice little touch. I'll put a few in here. This is like a, this is deep blues, but with a lot of um, that sort of green color, the yellow, um, uh, my brain's going, my yellow oxide. Sorry, that's what I was trying to think of. It's quite deep and dark and rich. Few darts in here. Um, oh dear. Um, so, are you essentially back in lockdown then, John? Is that what it's saying? I'm putting a few darks in one or two places, especially through here. I think we've got lost a little bit with too much of the other stuff going on. I'm just going to bring a little bit of that back in. And paint that around the edge. That's nice. I like that. A little bit into there. Just little tweaks now. So I, just, I do like that. I'm going to do a bit more of that onto that. Just like that lovely dark. Boom! Right in the middle of it all. I suggest a little subtle one there. Playing around with one or two of these shapes, that's all I'm doing, really. Um, I'm going to bring in that shadow and bring that one a bit more. Shadows of the uh, water and the, and the, you know, the patterns of the leaves over it. I think that's got a bit green, I don't know where that came from. Certainly shouldn't have been. Should have been more, uh, sorry, went too brown. Should have been more green. Let's just come back in with that. Let's cover that back over. Get rid of that. I look at that part in the core light of there. I can't quite see with the lights on it right now. Um, yeah, okay. Um, oh, I just put brown paint all up the side of my face. Great. Not exactly what you need to do on TV. <laughs> there you go. I have to wipe that off. I'm going to have a shower in a minute, eh? All right. We are well past the two hours, and I'm surprised there's still 19 people watching. Um, and I appreciate all oh, 20 of you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, that's fantastic, John. Be very, very careful, mate, because um, so many people around the country have taken liberties with this COVID, uh, thinking that because they're bored and the government has sort of relaxed a bit, they think they can do what they like. Um, yeah. 30 miles. COVID doesn't know borders, does it, mate? Uh, so you stay safe and keep your distance from people. And hopefully these idiots out there will start paying attention. Thank you, James. That's really kind. I forgot you were sitting on the side, mate. <laughs> yeah, you've been very, very quiet. Um, but I appreciate that. There's a little blob of green right in the centre there that is disturbing me. And I want to get rid of that before I finish. That in there, I just want to play around with this area. It's just been bothering me quite a bit. I want to bring the dark down here against the face, making that a little um, dark and greener, actually. It was the wrong green sitting there. I think that's the problem. And just coming in with some of these shapes again.
that's better. Okay, I'm happy with that bit now. Um, oh well, that is probably the wisest thing you can do. I tell you, I can't believe some of the people that I see. I, I must have a very brown face. I do apologise. <laughs> I just wipe my... Uh, at an itch and I wipe my face and the paper was full of brown paint like a numpty. There you go. <laughs> That's one for the books. Mm. Well, on that note, people, I'm going to sign it. And... Um, That'll be it for this painting, I think. Uh, I'm going to come in with a slightly lighter... Actually, I'm going to sign down here and make it darker. Let's come in. There we go. Signed and sorted out. Well, I do hope you've had fun with this one and enjoyed it. I've had a lot of fun painting it. I love painting koi. I'll have no um, compunction to do those any time that people want them. I just love painting koi carp. They're a lot of fun and no one picture is the same as the next. And uh, so, yeah. We got away with it and <laughs> painted myself into the bargain. Right, where are we? So, um, let's read some of these comments. Stunning painting. Thank you, Judy. Um, are you coming back to us on the 8th of uh, uh, July? That would be fantastic. Uh, we'll be safe and down and there'll be two tables each side of the room. So you can have to shout at each other. Uh, but I'd love to have you back. Um, no, where else are we? I've only got one out of the barrow for 30. Jolly good show, I say. Again, looks more real than the photo. Cheers, Paul. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate that lots. And I'm glad that Stuart got your computer up and running again. Wonder where you disappeared to. Um, my neighbours opposite have completely ignored any form of lockdown. Maybe opposite hug, kiss everyone who she meets. Uh, it's crazy. I've got a lady that's got two dogs and if I see her, I run away the opposite way as fast as I can because she will come right up to you and it's awful. I don't like it. Um, thank you, Bromley. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we are the worst of all countries, I think, apart from possibly America that's really suffering again with a big spike themselves now. Uh, cheers, Wendy. Thank you very much for that. I enjoyed the chat as well. I didn't read much of it. I will skip back and look at all the Bob Ross stuff and whatever you were doing in school. I don't know what that was all about. That was fun. Uh, well, hopefully you will see you, Judy. Uh, looking forward to everyone coming back. Everyone seems to be keen to get back in. Um, ben, thank you very much. Um, yeah, very wet. It, 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 yeah, I've enjoyed that. Uh, in fact, there's a bit of a run there. I've got to deal with that. That's a little bit of zest that's crept on. And um, it's just disturbed the paint surface. So let's just quickly... Get rid of that very nicely, I hope. There you go. Not too much of a problem there. Yeah. Um... <laughs> How's the shed coming on, James? I'm eager. i eager to get you down here, man. And uh, setting that thing up. And I'm still waiting for those little... All those sides of bits that you keep breaking and messing up. And... and don't need any more so I can start playing with some paint ideas I'm gonna do a video on it uh, cheers Derek uh, thank you very very much uh, for joining us again I hope it won't be too long before you come back to class mate I know you normally have the summer off summer's nearly over I think you've had enough summer mate I think you should come back to class um, and join us again um, yeah it's been fun I've enjoyed it I enjoyed this little painting it's really quite a nice one um, Good subject, 
good fun and uh, yeah all good all good 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 um, thank you John and um, yeah the complimentary is really working well and uh, I could make it a bit more blue in places but I think you can just go a little bit too far I think this is probably as far as I want to go with it um, but whatever you do mate you stay safe up there okay um, so that'll be cool everybody thank you very very much uh, for joining me this evening and I look forward to your company again on Friday for a watercolor uh, as usual at this point in the game I have no idea what I'm going to paint uh, I just love to paint and love for you to join me and don't forget my regular channel has got other videos on it so you don't have to just watch the streams you can actually watch uh, my um, other videos that are all over my uh, YouTube channel and if you do watch those then uh, put comments underneath them like them, give them the thumbs up, become a subscriber if you're not a subscriber. There's, I always think this word subscribe is wrong. I think it should change, but it sort of suggests you've got to pay, and you haven't got to pay a thing. It's just the word they use, subscribe. But subscribing helps me grow my channel. Michael, thank you very much for joining us. That's great. I don't know if the uh, gentleman from uh, Melbourne is still with us, if you are. Uh, thank you for sticking with it. Joan, thank you very, very much. Uh, that's fantastic. And now I'm not doing a Bob Ross watercolour, John. Come on. You're starting to get a little bit lippy just because you're in lockdown again. And you think you're you're only going to get out on your bike at four in the morning. Uh, Sue, thank you so much uh, for joining us. That's great. Appreciate that. Um, night, Ben. Um, <laughs> yeah, Wendy, you tell him. I'll set Wendy on you, John. And I'll give her your address and I'll set Wendy on you. Um, now then, who have I still got to say goodbye to? There's still 16 people watching and some have gone. Um, but, um, oh, hang on a minute. There's a name I haven't seen for a while. Liz, are you still there? I didn't realise I missed you come up in the thread. And Teresa, are you still there? Uh, and Ken, Ken from Australia, are you still with us? Um, if you are, just say hi before you say goodbye. Um, Liz, I didn't realise you were there, my lovely. Um, I hope you still are. I'm sorry I missed you, um, but great that you joined the, the uh, um, stream and had a look. Fantastic. Uh, that's great. Um, <laughs> got to make laughs. Got to smile. That's all about. That's what it's all about. Got to have a laugh. Got to have a smile. Enjoy oneself as best you can. Um, yeah. Well, it looks like Liz has gone and maybe Ken has gone. Ah, from Ireland. Mary, good evening. Hi. Have you just joined us or have you been watching all along? Because you're just saying hello and we're just finishing up. So I don't know if you've watched all of it or whether you're going to watch it back later. Um, but if you have just joined us, uh... <laughs> Ken, you are still there. Thank you so much. It's gone six in the morning. You can have your breakfast now, my friend. Um, but Mary, thank you very much from Ireland. Uh, great to have uh, you with us and hopefully you'll join us uh, on Friday for a watercolour and Ken if you fancy getting up early again watercolours if they're your thing as well join me on Friday that'd be fantastic Mary well you've missed most of it we are just sort of winding up now and calling it a night but um, maybe tomorrow this takes a, about a day to upload onto YouTube properly and do all its processing because of the length of time I guess um, but maybe you'll look it back and enjoy enjoy the rewatch as it were over the next week if you can and it's a bit of a long one but maybe hopefully you'll join us on Friday at 7 if you get a chance and um, join us then um, that'd be fantastic uh, <laughs> cheers Ken I look forward to seeing you next Monday Teresa thank you so much for joining us 
And don't forget, Teresa, get on Facebook and enjoy the Sunday uh, Patreon, uh, which will be 7 o'clock. And, um, you know, come along, Wendy and Judy and Tracy and other patrons joining in. So you must do that. Um, uh, James, such a lovely painting. I really enjoy this one. Cheers, James. I appreciate that so, so much. Uh, John, take care, my man. And, and I'm going to, like, it's, we're getting close to the longest one we've done. So um, I'm going to call it a day um, and let everybody finish off saying their goodbyes to everybody else. Liz, I don't know if you're still on the side. If you are, uh, just say cheerio. That would be nice. And I'd like to say cheerio to you. Um, and for everybody who has been watching, thank you so much. And for those, Mary, who've just joined us, hope to see you again um and uh that'll be fantastic and we're getting more and more people is john from spain are you still there uh james sorry are you still there from spain or have you disappeared and gone out in the sunshine wouldn't blame you i see it's not sunny over there now is it i'm getting a bit mixed up um yeah wendy thanks very much uh cheerio to you um catch you soon <clears throat> Got to go to the gallery tomorrow. We're open again now. The gallery in Hyde is open again. Just to let everybody know, we are fully open as a gallery on a Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and a Saturday. So that's five, uh, 10 till 5 every one of those days. So um, yeah, we are open and I am there and I'm painting and doing editing and filming for YouTube and Patreon. So... I'm keeping myself very busy down there. So if you're walking around the area and um, John, if you get lost from where you are and find yourself in Hyde about 10 in the morning one day, come and have a cuppa. <laughs> Love to see you. All right. I'm going to call it a day, guys, and it's getting very late. And I'm going to go and have some sustenance in the form of a beer, I think. So... Take care. I catch each and every one of you on Friday. And uh, thank you for joining me again. All the best. Stay safe. Stay happy. Enjoy your painting. And if you want to do this one, I will be putting the reference to this on my Patreon a little later uh, tomorrow. And uh, you can get involved with that and have a go yourself. Until that time, take care, guys. I've enjoyed it. Enjoyed this painting. Look for it on the pledge, maybe. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it up there. <laughs> it's quite a nice painting. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Take care, guys. Good night to you. Bye-bye. Cheers, Mark.